Welcome back to another episode. We're in Bohe Du Lang in the north of Borneo. Uh, over here is the Philippines, behind us Malaysia and to our right, not far, is Indonesia. So we're here for about seven weeks looking forward to some world-class diving, some time at anchor and hopefully some amazing scenery which we hope to bring to you, but also some other bits and pieces. Yeah, we're going to continue walk through the boat and show you some more of the layout that we have on board. Um, it's been uh, really been put to good use. We've had visitors and more visitors coming to use the boat together with us. So let's get on with it. Okay, let's do it. During our time in Asia, we've often been reminded that just because you're below the typhoon zone doesn't mean the wind doesn't blow. We've had 65 knots and here a consistent 43 for the day in the marina. We had a quick visit from Fleming just to fix up a few minor little issues, great service. And then it was time to welcome some special guests. Wow, and so finally the day arrived when we had our first visitors on board Freya. After about four and a half months away, our daughter, her boyfriend Jai and their friends from Australia came to spend two eventful weeks with us. They flew into Kota Kinabalu, but all they wanted to do was to head straight out and stay at anchor for almost the entire two weeks. We had a great time diving, snorkeling and just exploring the beautiful surroundings, playing games, having good food, few drinks and put it all on repeat again for the next day. It gave us a good insight towards it's like to have four guests on board and I'm sure they appreciated everything that they experienced. So we hope to share this journey with many more friends and family coming to see us. Welcome, this is Lani from Cruising Freya News Channel. How would you rate the park today? 11 out of 10. Not worried one bit. Came in, slotted in nice between the dock and another sailing boat. It was All a very calm, calm morning. See. Calm, cool and collected, the crew on board. No, not even a drop of sweat falling on my forehead. And then it was time to bunker some fuel. The first time we had to bunker fuel since we left Taiwan. We've done about 2,000 nautical miles and at least two months at anchor out of that. We still had 2,000 litres on the boat, so we managed to fit a full 10,000 litres on in our tanks. Everything went smoothly and it set us up for our trip around the tip of Borneo. One last stop at the markets the following morning and then time to go. What are you doing, Peter? Uh, collecting some pieces from the market. Okay. Looking for it for the trip. Very good. Where are you going tomorrow? Uh, heading to Tawau, maybe Sipadan Island. Yeah, very good. Lots of time on the boat. Yes, okay. awesome moments. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, after roughly three months here in uh, KK, Kota Kinabalu, born in Malaysia, we are now um, on our last day before heading over to the other side of Borneo where we will be diving Sipadan, Marble, uh, Kapalai, Siamil. So the last few days we refueled with 10,000 litres of fuel. We have bunkering here on the dock behind us um, yesterday and a couple of big days of provisioning with fresh produce, cooking meals, etc, etc. So um, yeah, we're excited, ready to keep going and uh, we are very grateful for all the beautiful people we met here in um, Kota Kinabalu. We made some fabulous friends and uh, we'll return here uh, after we've spent um, a couple of months over on the other side. So um, I'm off for one last trip to the shops to get some more batteries, um, maybe some more eggs. Fridge, fridge and freezers are full. So we are ready, very excited, times ahead. All right, ciao. 
Earlier in the day we moved to the fuel dock to make our 3 a.m. departure easier. We left the lights of Kota Kinabalu in our wake while we enjoyed the lightning show out to sea. Soon the sun was rising over Mount Kinabalu. All we had to do was to settle into the routine of getting this 350 or so nautical mile trip done easily and safely. <laughs> green dots are fishing boats. Malaysian fishing boats and then over to our port side I believe they're all Filipino fishing boats and we're going to try and weave through the middle of them at one o'clock in the morning. Very challenging Indeed. This headland here where Malaysia meets the Islamic area of the Philippines has been an area of numerous security incidents and kidnappings and deaths. We've been warned to be very careful and we were vigilant, although the increased security from Malaysia in the last few years certainly made us feel a lot more comfortable. Waking up at anchor is special. No two places are the same. No two mornings are the same. And as I lie there in bed before I get up, I can often tell what kind of morning it's going to be. When that sort of pink light at dawn comes in through the portholes, it's pretty fantastic to know that there's a sunrise waiting there for us. It's also exciting to wake up at anchor when you have arrived at night, so you don't actually know what the scenery is going to be like. Some anchorages are more special than others, and Bohe Dulang was certainly one of them. With islands, cliffs and mountains on either side of us, beautiful turquoise water and fringing reef. We could hear the hornbills calling and the monkeys from shore, as well as we had turtles come up for air around us. What could beat that?
Our tender is a vital piece of equipment on the boat, a bit like a family car. We use it for provisioning, for moving people around, for going diving, for going on outings, scouting coastlines, whatever we choose to do. It's lifted in and out often, and we do that with a one-ton crane from the boat deck. The tender weighs 750 kilos roughly, with a 100 horsepower on it. It has a Garmin plotter and sounder. The process of lifting it can take two or three of us, depending on the weather. If it's calm, two, but if it's a little bit rougher, then three. In an emergency situation, we could always tow it if we weren't able to lift it back onto the boat. Once on the cradle, it's locked in place so that it doesn't move, and whatever sea state Freya encounters, that tender should stay put.